With the 2017 Pentecost chapter, the missionary adventure of the nascent Franciscan order, and the presence of the first friars in the Holy Land began, an overseas mission that arose to found a new Franciscan province, the order consequently blossomed in their missionary and universal dimension. The first friars, led by Father Elias of Cortona, arrived in northern Israel at Acre. And those months, St. John of Acre, already the capital of the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem, was probably the busiest port in the world, a true crossroads of peoples. Military contingents and pilgrims landed there continually to take part in the Fifth Crusade proclaimed by Pope Innocent III. We know that Elia of Cortona, aka Elia Bonverone, was a lawyer, a very efficient legal counselor at administrative matters. Therefore, he was truly prepared to be the head of this mission. Chosen because he was the most capable person for this assignment, he stayed here for two years and later when St. Francis returned from Egypt after the Crusades, Elia of Cortona returned with him to Italy. At that time, the first problems arose in the order. Two years later, in 1219, St. Francis himself, as a pilgrim and a missionary, departed from Ancona and after crossing the Adriatic Sea, arrived at Acre in the Holy Land. About that journey, we all remember the meeting with Sultan Malek al Kamel in the context of the Fifth Crusade. Over the centuries, many artists from all over the world, especially Cimabue and Giotto, depicted Francis, the servant of the Most High, in the most significant episodes of the story of his rich life. It was a very courageous meeting. Francis came to this land because he desired to talk to the Sultan about Jesus. So he arrived in Acre first, and then from Acre he went down to Damietta in Egypt. Naturally, he had to get a permit to cross the lines, but he also had to get permission from the papal legate. There was a lot of uncertainty, but in the end, Francis asked to be allowed to cross the lines of war and get to meet with the Sultan. Potremmo dire le linee di guerra e arrivare dal Sultan. Noi accompagnato Francis decided to go with another friar, and when he met with the Sultan, he indeed had the opportunity to talk to him about Jesus, despite the contrary opinion of the Sultan's consultants and experts. Perhaps that meeting made him realize there was a chance to meet even among people of different faiths and religion in the name of the Most High. Father Francesco Patone believes that Francis' journey to the Holy Land was extremely important and significant to the Saint of Assisi, as it is for the entire order, because traces and echoes of this journey can be found everywhere in his writings dated after 1220. This meeting is documented both in the Franciscan records within our order and in external sources, especially in the Chronicles of the Crusaders. In a special way, that journey and that meeting and dialogue experience contributed to the elaboration of a real missionary methodology that we find summarized in chapter 16 of the Unbound Rule. Musulmano, quindi questo incontro è certamente ben documentato. 800 years of history have been preserved, annotated and witnessed for centuries within these walls of the custody of the Holy Land in Jerusalem with the help of modern technology. According to Brother Narcissus Klimas, the heart of the custody beats here. This is the oldest document that we have. It is the Bull of Pope Gregory the Ninth of 1230, which dates back to the full time of the Crusades. Although the friars were not present or cared for in the shrines, they were present in the Holy Land. In fact, in his bull, the Pope asked the bishops to help friars present in the Holy Land. The defense and protection of the sanctuaries that took place later was recorded on this other document. 
On this bull, which we know well, issued in 1342 by Clement VI, the Gratias Agimus bull, with which the Pope entrusts the protection of the holy places to the friars. This was already a clear reference to protect and care for the shrines, especially those that were already in our possession. From the oldest document to one of the most beautiful ones. This document is the most precious among those we have archived. The famous decree written in Turkish with Arabic characters, dating from the 18th century, deals precisely with the issue of sanctuaries, and therefore with the long battle for the status quo. If you observe attentively, you may notice that it is painted with gold plates, and that the colors used are fabulous. These colors are no longer available nowadays. For this reason, this is not just a historically important document, but it is also a work of art. It is priceless. Another precious piece is presented by the Daily Chronicles written by the Guardians of the Shrines, especially those written by the Sacristans. They reveal each detail of their daily routine, especially during their journey at the Holy Sepulchre. These documents summarize the chronicles of the story of the first friars, a story never transcribed before, the story of the beginning of the custody of the Holy Land. Obviously, they were handwritten at a later date, not during the same century, but they still have a great value because it was recorded not far from the foundation of the custody. It contains the chronicle of the Holy Land from 1304 to 1636. Bookkeeping records, such as those that document the reconstruction and restoration of the Dome of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre at risk of collapse in 1919, are also available. In this other document, all accounts and expenses are recorded, including the number of donkeys that were used to transport the timber and wood beams needed to support the Great Dome of the Holy Sepulchre. In the archives, the famous wood treasure chest with its particular story is also preserved. Here are also the records that give evidence that the Custos always guarded the famous wooden chest closely. Someone said in a joking manner that he used to hide it under the pillow when he slept to avoid being robbed because the chest contained the confirmation of all the bulls we received from the popes attesting our presence in the Holy Land. He took it wherever he went. At the beginning the chest was at Mount Zion at the Cynical. Later, when the friars were driven away from Mount Zion, from the Cynical, they brought it here, to St. Savior. They were sent away from the friars from Mount Zion, from the Cynical, and they brought it here to St. Salvatore. On Sunday, June 11th, the friars of the custody of the Holy Land began the 18th centennial celebrations of their presence in the places of Jesus' earthly life. Here are two words that are widely used. One is Nushkur Allah, which means thanks be to God. So we thank God for these 800 years and for everything that will happen from here on. The other word is Inshallah, which means if God wants, pleasing God. So it is important that we try to do what God wants and what he likes. In the next episode, we will analyze the life of the friars in the sanctuaries, the pilgrims' visits, the care of the living stones, the local Christians, and the mystery that surrounds the celebrations in the Holy Land.